Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. This is going to be me rating my subscribers' eyeshadow palette collections. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. This video is one that I had announced when I announced my palette month extravaganza and my giveaway that if you wanted to enter the giveaway, I would like you to share with me your eyeshadow palette collection and a little flat lay that I could then use for a video to comment on your different palette collections. And I had quite a few people entering the giveaway, so thank you so very much for joining. The person who has won has already contacted me, and as I'm filming this video, I will be sending the palette their way very, very shortly. So thank you yet again to everyone who entered, and today we're gonna go through all of these lovely pictures that you sent me. So first things first, I do have over a hundred images here to talk about. Pretty much everyone who entered didn't mind me sharing these images. And I love that so many of you were able to follow the instructions. So I didn't receive any pictures this time that could lead people to dox themselves and like have like recognizable features of their homes in these images. So I'm super happy with it. So what I'm just going to be doing is I'm going to make myself a lot smaller and put myself somewhere in the corner and then have the images full screen and then I can chat about them. Um, I won't be naming names or anything like that, but if you do recognize your palettes, uh, your palette collection, then uh, I hope that's okay. I also know that not, not I also know that not all of these are grouped correctly on the Google Drive where I have them. So if you see me looking down, it's because I have to look at my screen here where I have all the images, and I'm going to go through them as in the order that they are in the folder. That's also how I save them to put them in the video. So here we go. So first things first, this looks like a really pretty indie palette collection. I see quite a lot of unearthly here. I see some adept. I have to go this way because it's I haven't tilted the images yet. Uh, then we have Ensley Rain. We have the Tiny Marvels palette with Sydney Grace and Mel Thompson. We have some uh, Menagerie in here, some Lime Crime. So uh, Odin's Eye as well, I see the Giant Wolves palette with Annette and some Glam Light here as well off to the right. So some really pretty palettes here. You really seem to be loving your indie palettes. And as you know, from my eyeshadow palette collection, I love myself an indie palette as well. I own the Cold Moon. Um, I think the green one may be an Adept palette that I also have. I have the Dreamer from, from Unearthly. I have the Menagerie palette, the Feral, and also the Friday the 13th. So I definitely have a couple of these in my collection myself. So I think these are really, really good picks, and I really enjoy this first collection. And next up, I believe this person sent me multiple pictures. Uh, some people also sent me images of their palettes open and closed, so I'll just insert them as they send them to me. And here we see some Blend Bunny. Uh, I think that's another Adept palette. We have some Pat McGrath. Um, and then we have Anastasia, Beverly Hills, we have some What's Up Beauty, and then we have three Odin's Eye palettes. I'm not sure what the other two at the bottom are. I don't recognize the fronts as easily as the other ones, but this looks really, really pretty. Um, as I said, there will be multiple images here, so this is not everything that this person sent me, but I think these are some really, really good um, picks. The Sugar and Grunge, I mentioned in a video recently that that's one that sort of got away because they can no longer sell this palette due to copyright infringement. Someone like had a claim or something like that. So I know that palette is no longer around. And right as I decided that I might want to buy it, that's when they announced they were going to discontinue it. The Odin's Eye palettes, I think, look really, really stunning. Uh, especially the Flora story, the one that they did with Amanda from Makeup Just for Fun, was such a beautiful neutral color story. So knowing, like, I don't know what's inside the Pat McGrath palette because that could be a lot of different things, but I think that this is a really nice array of different color stories we get here. Then we have some more Odin's Eye from the same person. Um, there's the Angelica Nukvis collab from Halloween from last year. All four of the Christmas palettes that they had last year. We have some Cosmic Brushes. Is that a Fenty palette, the one with the emblem in the middle? Um, some Catrice, so we also like some affordable things. I love seeing that. 
some Glaminatrix, and then some Natasha Denona. Some of my favorite brands as well, so I think this is gorgeous. Next up, this is also a person, I believe, who sent me several images, and here we have, again, some Blend Bunny off to the left side. I see a Lisa Eldridge Vega in there. There's a Tarte, I think it's the Juicy palette that's right there at the top. We also have some singles. We have the Nomad Haunted Europe in here. Um, some more Blend Bunny. Uh, Glaminatrix, that neutral palette that I decluttered, but that I did keep some singles by. Uh, Simply Posh is in here, from what I can tell. And then at the bottom, I see some Glaminatrix, uh, because I, I recognize the uh, Sugar and Spice, I think that's what it's called, uh, at the bottom that I have as well. Some singles palettes again. We have some Ensley Rain. And I think... Are these also the Odin's Eye palettes, the three like rectangular ones over to the right side. I think they might be. Um, and then I think I see a What's Up Beauty palette in there as well, some Huda Beauty, and then uh, some, are they? Uh, oh yeah, that's the Mary Jane for Melt, the She's in Parties, the Smoke Sessions, some Viseyards and like a nine pen from Huda Beauty and some Pat McGrath. I, I think this is a really beautiful collection. This is very similar to things I have as well. And having them all laid out open like this is very satisfying for me to see. So I think this, a, this is a lovely collection and you have a really good variety here. Um, next up is a different person. And I just love this as well because some people also t like took images of how they stored them. So even though I cannot really tell exactly what palettes are here, just looking at the side, because not all of these are labeled the way they are here, but I can recognize some of the packaging. We see some Urban Decay in here. There's a Too Faced palette. Um, we have some uh, Natasha Denona in there. I can see some Vizzy art here at the front at the right. But I just love how satisfying this looks. Having all of your palettes on a little bookshelf, I think is ingenious. Apparently, like uh, depending on how much you have, like for me, I would not be able to do it. I have this fantasy, like if you've ever watched any of my tutorial videos where I sit in my office and I have the two shelves behind me, like part of me wants to put my palettes on those two shelves so that they can be the background in my filming. However, that's, uh, that room gets quite a lot of daylight and I'm just really afraid that my palettes are gonna discolor when I do have them there. Cause this did happen to a Juvia's Place palette I used to own. It was too big to fit in the drawer. So I had it like on top of the desk and it became completely discolored. So that's why I'm a little bit mm, against doing something like this myself. Um, I like to keep things in a drawer because it gives, means they're in a dark spot and it means the makeup can last longer. But if you put it in a dark corner of your room, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's fine. As long as this is not in a bathroom, I'm sure it's fine. But I think this looks very satisfying indeed. Uh, this is the same person, and I just love that we also get a look at some of the uh, singles and stuff that they have. So I think these are also other eye products that they are currently using. So we have a whole stack of melt palettes there at the top. Love the Millennial Pinks. I think that's such an underrated palette, so glad to see it here. Um, and then I think, yeah, some Blend Bunny here as well. And I think a, a whole bunch of the Beauty Bay palettes are here too, so... And I can see some, I think they're Nomad palettes in the middle. I can like recognize some of the edges there. Um, so this is a wonderful collection. I think you have really nice variety here from what I can tell. And also some of the brands I truly love and adore. So the next person has a really nice palette of singles here. I cannot really tell, of course, what brands they are, but they are colors that if they suit you, they that that is such a good way of building your own neutral palette. I really love to see it. And then we just have some lovely S's and Catrice. You know that I love the cool toned version of the nude edition and the rose edition uh, because I just have that one in my collection. And then those are two of the new palettes that Catrice did this spring that I've also tested out for you. And those are really nice quality. Um, and you seem to love a good neutral, which again, I have nothing against. This is really nice, small and curated quite affordable as well. And I think that that's great. We need to use the makeup that fits our lifestyle and our budget. And uh, I love that this isn't like super trend led. Here we have a really nice flat lay again with all of these palette open. Let me check whether, yeah, we also have it closed. That's going to be the next image here. Um, so we have a whole host of things. I, I can recognize Pat McGrath, Too Faced, 
the Club Nebula from Kaleidos. You know how much I love that. I can see the Carly Bible, um, the Desert Monsoon from What's a Beauty, the Dreamer from Unearthly. I think some Juvia's Place is in there as well. The Tribe I recognize. I'm just wondering what those eight pans in the middle are. So let me check real quickly. Oh, I can't really see. Oh, they're by Unique Beauty. Ah, see, that's a brand I haven't really um, heard of or like been able to really get my hands on a lot. But I, I can see like a really nice mix here of some like grungy, more colorful things, uh, some brighter options, because I see a Game Beauty Blue palette right there as well, but then also some really good neutral selections. And yeah, I just think that this is a really nice array of palettes again as well. You also seem to have the NYX palette. That wasn't my favorite. I just didn't love the quality. And I do also love that, for instance, in that Carly Bible palette, we can see how much you love that because there are some really like true, true dips there as well. Love to see a well-used collection. And this is the overview of all of these palettes closed. So that gives me a little bit more of an idea of what some of these are. Yeah, see, so the big palette was one of those like culture palettes, I think, from Juvia's Place. I was right about the game beauty. You have all three of the What's Up beauty. Ah, I see, I see. Again, Tiny Marvels from Sydney Grace. I think that that's a really popular palette still till this day. I'm not sure if they still do it. I believe they said they were going to keep that one around until demand dwindled too far down. And I love seeing that palette in so many collections already. We have another really satisfying one with all of these open palettes. I immediately recognized two of the palettes that Cosmic Brushes released this year, the Cool Trolls and the Neutrals. Um, I think, do we also have closed? No, we don't have them closed, but it's, I'm not sure if I'm saying this right, but I think right below that, there may be um, the Jeffree Star Orgy palette. I think that's the one. I'm not entirely sure. We seem to have like some Huda Beauty nine pans, but that, that are like dupes because I don't recognize these color stories per se, but that just could be that I don't have them myself. Um, we also have some Nabla palettes. I think you have some Dreamy palettes in there too. Um, maybe some Lunar Beauty. I can recognize the essence, welcome to Cape Town. That's right there at the top somewhere. Some makeup revolution bits. So I can see here that you do really like your affordable brands. There seem to be a lot of these like brands that I usually find on Beauty Bay um, that are in here. Like, oh, is that the Soph palette? Oh, the Soph palette was so amazing. That was some of the best quality that makeup Re revolution ever did, I find. So I had to declutter mine because it was far too warm toned for me, but I understand why you have that in your collections. So yeah, a really nice mix of more affordable and lesser known brands to me anyways. And I think this looks like a stunning collection. So th this I love. This person sent me at least two images, one with all of the palettes closed, and then the next one is with all of the palettes open. So this has me super excited. I think we have, is that Profusion or is it a NYX palette at the top? We have some uh, Lime Crime. We have the Vive 90s. We all know that wasn't my favorite. I know, I know, I know. I think there are some Moira in here too, some Juvia's Place, two of the Disney Villains palettes, that Cruella palette. The color story of it is so, so beautiful. But those I found weren't the good Catrice quality. But you do make up for the fact that you do have the falling colors. So you're forgiven because the follow colors is one of my all-time favorite palettes. We all know that. Makeup Geek, I'm not sure if those are like empty palettes that you filled with singles yourself at this point, but Makeup Geek also used to do these pre-made, so it could be both. We have some ColourPop in here. I recognize some Maybelline and Makeup Revolution. Uh, let me see what else is in here. Ooh, is that like a dupe for the Huda Beauty? Rose Quartz, I think I see there as well. Some more like Essence and Catrice bits. I think that's the Raw Neutrals from 3CE. That is one that I've been eyeing up myself, but that palette overnight became 20 euros more expensive on YesStyle. When I checked that palette out about half a year ago, it was retailing for around the 35 euro mark. Now on YesStyle, it's 54. So I'm not sure if I want to commit. Um, a bunch of like the small things. I think there is some uh, Catrice in there. Also some of the MUA palettes that I've been raving about. The Elf Celestial Winter, the Essence Cool Nude, some Nine Pans here. 
yeah, some Zoeva even. I love that. The Precious palette is one that I'm going to be testing out again really, really soon. I recognize that the Balm palette right there in the middle. Really, really stunning brands in here. So let's have a look at these color stories. That This looks really cool. <laughs> I just love how satisfying it looks to have them all open. Um, and I can, I can tell from here, you love your neutrals and you love softer, murkier pops of color. So there isn't anything here that is like super bright and I like it. I think this is so satisfying to look at everything in one overlay. I think, is that an Essence palette? The one with like the nine pans with like the golder rims around the circle? I think that may be Essence from like some limited edition collection. I'm not sure which one it is. But yeah, those all look really, really stunning. Yeah, I think the orders did get mixed up a little bit compared to the previous picture, but this is so satisfying to look at, and I think this is really, really pretty. I would personally want more pops of color in here, but that's just me. So here we have some really nice, bright, bright options. Um, this person has sent me two images, so the next one is also from this, uh, this subscriber, and... I can see, oh, you have the little candy cookie jar from, I don't remember the brand. That one just gave me a headache to look at. Like if pans aren't organized very neatly, I don't want it. I don't want it. I recognize a lot of those pro palettes that Makeup Revolution did. Um, those are all the way at like, I think that side of the collection. I'm not sure how it's going to show up for you guys. Um, but I also, I think there are some, is it ColourPop? Yeah, I think it's the Aha Honey and the Just My Luck are in here. Yeah, some really pretty things. But you do like a bit of color. You definitely do like a bit of color. Oh, the Surge is right there in the middle. Um, this is very colorful. This is, I think, the most colorful thing we've seen so far. Ah, and then you also like a bit of sparkle. Oh, yeah. So here we get the glitter part of this person's collection. I also recognize some of the little five pans from Essence that they did with the little doors that open. Um, I think some Catrice, yeah. So a really, really lovely array of palettes, but you like a bit of color, which I have nothing against, but I would personally want more neutrals in here. So if we blended the two collections together from this person and the person before this, I would like that a lot better. So here again, we have two images. We have all of the palettes closed. And here we just have a really nice array of drugstore, lots of Catrice and some Maybelline. And that's and the Kiko palette, of course. So again, the Corella palette, I think the color story is so, so beautiful of. I never tried the Lion King, Jungle Book and the Winnie the Pooh collections because those became later. And at the point that those were released, I just realized that these Disney collections weren't the quality that I wanted Catrice to have. So that's why I passed up on some of the later collections because I just was, I felt like I was spending a lot of money on these things. And even though the videos I would do with it would do really well, it just meant I had such an overload of product that I knew I was never going to use again that I just felt it wasn't very sustainable if I kept buying them, even though it made for good content. So... Not gonna lie that I did miss out on those, so I don't know how good they are. I heard some good things about the Jungle Book collection, especially. Here is what all of those color story looks like. Look like we love a bit of pan. Look at that Maybelline palette being used. Oh yes, loving it. Um, we have those softer purples. I think that was the middle Winnie the Pooh palette. And can we just again take a moment for that Cruella palette? The grays with that pop of red. It just tickles part of my brain that I find really satisfying. And we all know my love for the falling colors and the five in a box and diamond lavender look. Those are some of my favorites. This is very nice, small and curated. If you want my advice, if you were looking to expand your collection, I'm not saying you should. If you're happy with this, stick to this. But I would think that you could branch out a little bit more. So maybe add something that's just a little bit of a tier up in terms of like price point. Um, so I would suggest like putting like something like maybe like a glam shop palette in there. Uh, you could perhaps like the grunge palette they have. Um, that's a very matte heavy palette, but it does give you a nice array of colors. So that way you could like try some like indie, um, palettes, but it's not like super duper expensive, but that's going to give you a different sense of eyeshadow quality. I think if you were to, if you were to try a brand like that and 
the fact that you have all of these Catrice things makes me think you're in Europe. And then Glam Shop is quite accessible, I think. Next up, here we have everything laid out on a bed. And I can see a lot of things in here that are like color pop things over to the right of the image. I can see the mint to be, the high tide, the Mandalorian, the child, limelight. That's one I never got because the reviews weren't good, but I love the color story of that. Um, I can also see the yes, please. Wasn't that their like first palette they ever came out with? That's commitment. I love seeing these older palettes in collections. I think there's also the Raw Beauty Christie palette, the, um, what was it called again? At Forest Sight. Uh, we have some Maybelline in the middle. We have a whole host of the Essence Travel collection. Some of the old ones, as well as some of the newer ones. I see the Miami, the Roma. Um, I used to have the New York palette as well. That was so pretty color story wise with those grays and those purples it had. I really liked it, but the quality was a bit iffy, I find. You have all of the older styles of the Pro palettes, I think. Maybe you're missing just one. They could all of, uh, be all of them. I think there are nine or ten of those in that collection. And then one of the newer ones. Um, we also have some smaller things down here. Um, then we have a bunch of the Catrice uh, older style palettes that they used to do in the clear packaging. You have three of those Essence Edition palettes. I see a whole collection of ColourPop Super Shocks in there. Is that the Princess collection they did? I, I'm thinking it could be. And I think two Essence palettes that had those like weird pans. I used to have a rosy toned version there um, that I liked. And then I recognize a lot of Jeffree Star, which is a brand I've pulled apart the palettes I had and put them in a singles palette, which is something I just should just throw out at some point. But some of the shades he did were so different compared to anything else that I did want to keep out around some of those things. But I feel by now... I have those in my collection and other palettes, so I don't need to keep it around anymore. But that's why I initially destroyed the palettes and pulled them apart. Um, and I don't really, I can't recognize what's up here because it's a bit small, but I think it may be some Odin's Eye. Yeah, we love a bit of Odin's Eye up here. Uh, I, oh yeah, the Hella palette is in here. I think the Solomona 1 and 2 in the new versions. And then I think some of the Freya or Elva palettes that we got at some points and one of their five pans. Yeah, so I think that's there as well. So lovely collection. I think there's a good array here. You love your affordable brands. You really, really love your affordable brands. Odin's Eye and Jeffree Star. I'm not sure if you send me anything else. Oh yeah, here are some more. Um, this is the rest of this person's collection. So before I start judging, um, we also seem to have a bunch of highlighters in there. So maybe you've just sent me your entire makeup collection. That's fun as well. That's fine. That's fine. Um, we have the Just My Luck, some more ColourPop up there. Huda Beauty is in here. See, because that was the thing I was wondering. Like, do you have high-end brands as well, like Sephora brands. But we have some Huda Beauty in there. Um, I don't know what Salen is. Is that Selen? Salen? Se I don't know. S-E-L-E-N. There seem to be a couple of palettes in here as well. And then I see some limited edition Essence and Catrice stuff down there as well. So that's a, a lovely, lovely overview. So yes, as I was saying, I think that you could try and see if you if you want to. Again, you don't have to. I'm not saying you have to. But you could look into like something like a Natasha Denona, I think. Maybe start with one of the little things. I don't really, from this overview, I can't really see if you have any of those. But like a Natasha Denona 5 pan, so you can try the formula, I think would be a nice way to branch out. But you have, like me, plenty of eyeshadow palettes, so I don't think you need to get anything else. But if you would want to, that would be my recommendation. And remember what I said? I love seeing people who really get the use of their products. I see, say this many times about my own collection. Because I'm on YouTube, my palettes don't get the kind of use that you would get if you only have this many. It's just not feasible for me. Um, but I love it when people really commit. I... I personally really like variety and I like like variety of the spice of life. That could be like my mantra, you could say. So I would not like having just this many palettes. I know some people are like, ooh, I have 10 palettes and I think it's a lot. I would like one to try new things. That's pretty much how this entire channel came about because I wanted to try 
new things. Um, and I just really love seeing what formulas are out there. Um, but here we see, like, I think that's the essence I like to move it, move it. And the uh, Catrice, one of the pro palettes is in here. I think that may be an elf palette. Uh, one of those little, no, those were four pans. So I don't recognize that style. And then I just think some drugstore things in here. Um, so again, very drugstore. I think that's great. If you love this, fine. But I could not just have five palettes and hit pan like this. I Even when it was like early days for me in my makeup journey, I was like testing out new things left, right, and center the entire time because I was really trying to see like what quality of makeup I liked. And for me at the drugstore, I didn't always find that. Like things were chalky and especially when you then find formulas you love, the bar goes up a lot. So if you've ever found me negative in some of my reviews, that may be why, because the bar is incredibly high for brands for me to like be satisfied. Um, but yeah, like I said, if this is what you love and this is what you like having, you do you, I think that's great. I think this person sent me multiple images again. So yeah, here we have, ooh, we have like six or seven, oh no, eight. Like we have quite a few, so I'm gonna try and breeze through these because there's only a couple of palettes in every single um, in every single image. We have some Catrice and S's in here. Um, is that that's Wet and Wild, right? The Wet and Wild, like when they started doing the dupe from the Modern Renaissance, used to own that W7 W7. I think I had a palette from them at some point in time. I know I had their dupe for the film star bronze and glow though. I think it was called the Hollywood bronze and glow. And I used to love that thing to pieces. It was one of my favorite bronzers. I hit pan on that thing. W7 does some good makeup, but they're very focused on doing dupes, which I don't love. We have some Rimmel in here as well. The body shop. Oh, here are they open? I think, I think that may be what we're looking at here. Then we have the two palettes from a Disney collection that I did review. I still have my Dumbo palette. The Bambi was really pretty too with the browns and the greens. Love that. And then two um, little essence palettes, uh, some more essence and Catrice. You love your affordable things as well, I can tell. Um, and then we have, uh, these are again some open palettes. I think they, these may be the ones we've just seen. And yeah, here's the overview again with those same palettes in. And here we have something a little bit more colorful. Here I would say, if you would like to expand, see if you can get some more colorful things. And also for you, I would recommend looking into like a brand like Glam Shop to really test out some different formulas that are a little bit more impactful and that won't uh, like make it necessary for you to like build your eyeshadow for days because these are all really soft things. And while that's really pretty, and we all know I love my K-Beauty stuff, which gives me that soft look, um, which is the intention of those palettes. But with these, I'm like, you, you, you might be missing out on the really exciting things. That's just, that's just what I'm saying. But I'm not saying you need to buy more. If this makes you happy, stick with it. So here we have another overview of a palette. Is that one of those BH Cosmetics Zodiac palettes? I think it might be. We have the Juvia's Place. Melody from Zoeva, chef's kiss, love seeing that. I love that you guys like me also have these older palettes that were discontinued years ago because I still love mine. And if I love a palette, I'm gonna keep it around. Some ColourPop, we have some Pet McGrath in here. Uh, some of the Blitz Astral things, I think. Huda Beauty, ColourPop, uh, lots of ColourPop down to bottom actually. We have some What's Up Beauty. I think the, the Monsoon and the Geodes, love that. Maybe an Odin's Eye palette. Yep, I was right about the Odin's Eye palette. Then we have some Fantasy Cosmetica in here. The Wizard and the Druid, love it. Do you, do you have the new packaging for the Druid? I'm jealous. I would repurchase that palette just for the packaging because I love that stained glass look they're doing right now. I see some Nabla in here, the Platinum Cutie, uh, Huda Beauty, and then I think you have the uh, five of the Kaleidos quads, the um, the ones that I also love. Do you have Venus Trap? You have Venus Trap. Good job. <laughs> Huda Beauty, uh, the Nude Light Obsessions, 
And then I think you also have some singles. Are those Cleona stained glass? They look like it. Um, so yeah, lovely, lovely collection, quite a bit of variety, but here as well, it's quite muted, neutral leaning. So here I would also recommend if you want to play, see if you can find a colorful palette you like in like something like Glam Shop or something like that, because I think that might be a pretty addition to your collection if you want to, if you want to. So here again, really nice and curated. This palette, this person has three palettes. At least that's the image that I have here. It could be that later on I can like I can find some other like palette, like other images that people have sent me. So I'm not gonna knock it straight away um, because somehow it didn't all end up in the same place. Um, we have some Odin's Eye and we have the Evil Queen palette from Essence. I also tried this collection from uh, Essence and Catrice when it came out. I think at the time Essence was doing the villains and then Disney had like princesses or it was an old villains collection. I don't remember. Um, the Hey Reindeer palette from Odin's Eye. We know my thoughts about Odin's Eye, right? That they might have a batch problem, but that's my theory. I'm not sure if I'm right. Uh, here we have the Makeup Revolution. Is this all Makeup Revolution? Yes. You seem to love your IPs and you like pineapples. Nothing wrong with that. Nice, small, curated collection here. And here we have the pa the pineapple palette. So these got saved in a weird way. I do apologize. And the Makeup Revolution palettes uh, all opened up. Um, quite colorful, but here as well, quite a lot of pink and quite a lot of color. So if you want to, I'm not saying you have to, but maybe have a neutral palette. There are neutrals in these palettes, so you can definitely use it that way, but. I would like, for me, like you'll see a video tomorrow where I try to do my own color analysis. Th this is very cool summer spring coated for me, which are not my shades. Here we have, let me see how many images this person sent me. Okay, so I think I have one image here. We have some ColourPop, uh, Huda Beauty, Natasha Denona, Urban Decay Naked 3, Stone Cold Fox, Makeup by Mario. Of course, I cannot tell which one it is because Makeup by Mario packaging all looks the same. Um, but ColourPop seems to be like your go-to affordable brand. And then you have some higher end, sort of what I would like to call Sephora brands in there. Lovely things. I think there is an array here of like brighter things, grungier things. I don't know what that marbleized packaging is at the top um, because I can't really see what it is. It could be an empty palette that you filled yourself. Uh, because those things sometimes look like that. Um, and then like a bunch of neutrals. So here again, you do have that brighter like rainbow palette that Huda Beauty used to do. So there is a pop of color in here. So I think it's pretty balanced already. Um, and I believe the garden variety did have some like softer, almost like pastel leaning shades, but yeah, you have some nice things in here. Cool tones, warm tones. I think you're ranging a nice spectrum with a very nice curated collection. We have an empty palette. I think both of these are empty palettes. We have the Garfield, we have the Blends from Blend Buddy, and a Viseyard palette. Do we have images of what these look like inside? No, we don't. But I think that this, again, nice, small, curated, with something like the Blend Bunny palettes, because they give you so many shades in different gradations, I think that can be really, really clever if you're a beginner or if you don't have that many eyeshadows yet because you're going to get a lot of colors that all fit together in one go. So that's why something like the Blend Bunny definitely makes sense to me. What if you were to if you were to be considering buying a new palette and you like these bigger palettes that are like a one-stop shop, look at the Beauty Bay because they do a lot of these things as well where they do palettes in different sizes in the same color story in their regular range. And they did a really lovely cool tone one that I can't wait to test out for you guys. So that might be a good addition here if you wanted to. Next up is I think mainly like eyeshadow sticks and singles and like smaller things. I can see some Kiko in here. Um, I think there is also an empty palette. We have some Lisa Eldridge. We have some Chanel. So here we get some bougie things. You love your expensive brands because I also see some Charlotte Tilbury and some Victoria Beckham. But there is still a blend here because we also have those Kiko bits, which are far more affordable. But you seem to have a preference for more expensive things. And I think actually the Myth palette from Lisa Eldridge is what is depotted in, into the empty palette. 
Um, so if that's the way it works for you and you like using your shadows that way, you do you. I think that's great. Um, so yeah, you, you like you like a splurge. That's what I can take away from this, which there's nothing wrong with that. I very often like to do that myself from time to time as well. I just bought that Dior uh, Smoky Essentials palette from the Backstage range. And that, that was my splurge for like a while to come. I, I think that's a really nice one. So having these things sprinkled into your collection, chef's kiss. Next up, we have some Catrice. I see some Mac. Uh, Isadora is in here. I just got myself some Isadora quads. So I hope to be able to test them out. Viseart Cashmere. Yes. If I see that palette and the Catrice Falling Colors in your collection, we're going to be best friends. Um, so I just love that. Natasha Denona, My Dream, though, wasn't my favorite. It was, I, I was doubtful about that color story when I bought it, and I was right. I, I'm very glad I rearranged that one. We have some Jekyll Hill, Morphe, Pat McGrath, more Mac, Tarte, and Lisa Eldridge as well, and another Morphe palette at the bottom. Oh, and LH Cosmetics, Bobbi Brown, and Charlotte Tilbury. And then I don't know, oh, no. I don't know what that golden 20s palette is in the middle. So um, overall, I like the look of this collection. I haven't seen the color stories, of course. And I do think, though, that Mac and Bobbi Brown would not be my first picks for eyeshadow. But that's just me. Uh, Mac eyeshadow is really good as singles. I have never found a Mac palette I liked. And very often they don't do the good quality shadow in their palettes. But that's just my experience from having swatched it in store. So I have always focused on buying MAC singles. And I still have a lot of my old ones. So I do love MAC for eyeshadow. I just think they became very underrated when the shift in the beauty community was like pushing these really intensely super impactful indie uh, shades. So if you want my advice, if you would want to expand your collection with a new palette, look into indie brands because you seem to have like your bases covered but if you want to explore different textures and like try different formulas then pick an indie brand you like and see if you can figure that out Ooh, let me see do we have it open no we don't um so here we have another overlay again from someone we have some vive we have melt we have um some bh cosmetics pat mcgrath lots of motherships in there huda beauty naughty nude one I didn't get, and I didn't get it because it was too warm toned. But if you loved warm tones, that was a beautiful palette. We have some cosmic brushes, dead roses from Bella Beauty Bar, I guess. Uh, Blend Bunny, Natasha Denona, Tom Ford. Is Tom Ford good? I don't know. I don't know. I have not been able to determine for myself whether I find it worth the money to get his his eyeshadow. Um, I once had it on a wish list and then I swatched it in store and I felt very underwhelmed. And by now those quads are like a hundred euros a piece. So I'm not sure if I still want to do that. NARS I see in here. Uh, Rowan, I think. Ooh. Um, we have Glamlight, Colourpop. I see some Lisa Eldritch in here. One of those longer palettes from uh, Charlotte Tilbury. So uh, yeah, I think... Yeah, so if if I had to give you one recommendation, because I see a lot of expensive makeup in here, um, is to maybe look into drugstore brands if you want to branch out. I would say drugstore or K-Beauty, because I don't think you have a palette that's under 50 euros. Maybe those mini Natasha Denona things I can see in the middle, but that's about it. <laughs> so you may want to look into that if you're interested. But lovely high-end collection. Um and some palettes in there that I would definitely, definitely like to try myself if I didn't have them already. Next up, we have some of the Balm, the What's the Tea palettes. These, these were so fun because the pans were shaped like cups of tea. Uh, I think that's a Beauty Bay palette. We also have some BH, OPV Beauty Spotlight. Who remembers that one? That one was around for a while. Some Zoeva palettes. We have Nabla, and then we have some Odin's Eye here as well. Really nice curated 
Can't really say too much about the color stories because I don't know all of these, but I think you do have a mix of like neutrals and some more colorful things, but they're again on the softer side when it comes to color. So if you want my advice, add something a bit brighter if you don't have that yet. Next up, we have some Unearthly with some Pat McGrath, Anastasia. I see some Dior and Tom Ford at the bottom, Lisa Eldridge. Gloss Gods. I love to see that. I know I keep raving about that brand, but I feel they're so underrated. And I think here again, this is the second person with that palette with the gems on it, which I believe is the Byredo palette, which some people have asked me if I were interested in reviewing it. And I actually saw this in real life at the Byredo counter at Liberty's when I was in London this year. And I swatched it and I just knew it wasn't my formula. It's like a baked mineral formula. And that's just on my dry skin. It just, it looks very patchy and I, I'm just not a fan. And then I find this too expensive. And a lot of people think it's very cool tone, but when I saw it in real life, I felt it looked a lot more warm tone than the images on online made it seem. Because I wanted to like, I sort of stumbled upon it by chance. Um, not thinking I would be able to see it in real life, but now that I have seen it in real life, I'm like, that ain't for me. We have Natasha Denona in here, and we also have some Viseyard, those YSL clutches. Oh, the packaging. It looks like a YSL bag. I think they've done that really cleverly. Goes with the brand really well, but it's not the kind of packaging I would want for myself. Uh, Love's Journey by Sydney Grace. Love to see it. Some Huda Beauty. Rose Quartz and Pretty, Pretty Grunge, my two favorites. We have a Kaleido Squad and some Charlotte Tilbury. So here again, quite high end. I think the, the Gloss Gods things may actually be the cheapest things you have. Looking at it. If we like bougie things, we like bougie things. That's absolutely fine. But you can also find good eyeshadow. That's a little lower price than this. So here again, very sad. I love this image. Like this, this could be your... Instagram cover photo if you'd wanted to. Um, here, someone really took the time to like set the scene with the little pretty flowers in the background. Love to see it. I can see the Born to Run from Urban Decay. I think that's a Linda Hulberg palette with the pastels inside. Uh, I think some Lethal, have uh, the Heaven on Earth from Sydney Grace. Fighter from um, Fantasy Cosmetica. Martina Cosmetics, is that the 669? That's one that got away. I never was able to buy that. I, When I decided that I was going to buy it, it was sold out and it never, never came back. Uh, so that's one that I missed out on. Uh, we have the Ace Beauté, the ABH Sultry, Jackie Ina, Norvina, and Subculture. We all know how much I like my Subculture. Uh, and some Blend Bunny. Um, oh, and that, that Citrus Punch palette. What, what brand was that by? Again, was it DG, DD Signature? Something along those lines. So here they are all laid out. So the, these are what all the color stories look like. Very satisfying to see them all laid out like this. I think you have a wonderful collection. You have bright things, you've got colorful things, you've got neutral things. It's a nice blend, but here again, if you haven't yet, maybe you could try. Just maybe you could try some drugstore things. So this is one I need to breeze through because this person sent several images. We have uh, some Bad Habits slash, what was it called again, that other brand? They're now called, I don't remember. I actually, they actually sent me PR. I feel very terrible. Um, but we have some AOA and we have some Huda Beauty. And I think some of these are also Pat McGrath dupes from Bad Habit. Bad Habit as a brand no longer exists, but they've rebranded and they're now named something else. And I'm completely blanking on what they're called now. Um, and they are still like mainly duping other palettes, which I'm not a huge fan of. And now that I've tried the quality, I know that for me being in Europe, it wouldn't be worth buying because the palettes are still like 15 to 20 euros. And then adding shipping and handling fees would make it almost as expensive as the palettes that they're trying to dupe. So for me, it makes more sense to like wait a little bit a lot some budget and buy the more expensive thing. But if you're in the US, then this brand can be a helpful way to try out color stories. Um, the reveal palettes from Coastal Scents, I think those were. We have Naked Reloaded, Modern Renaissance, some more Bad Habit palettes. I'm not sure what these are trying to dupe. 
I, but I do believe, were these like ABH dupes? I think they were. Or maybe these were the Pat McGrath dupes, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not too sure on those things because I'm, I'm not that interested in like dupe brands myself. So I think it's a great way if you don't have the money to buy these color stories, but don't expect to get the same quality because you're not. Um, Viseart, so you do definitely want to spend money on makeup, else you wouldn't have these big plastic palettes, because those were pricey. I had one of them myself, didn't love it. Um, Wet n Wild, and you have the old style. That's the comfort zone. I used to own that. I think I did. I think I had comfort zone. I had the purple one and this one, I think. Yeah. Great pick. Great pick. That's still, till this day, one of the best drugstore palettes. So sad they reformulated. Then we have some of the Venus palettes from Lime Crime. We all know I love that. The Venus 2 was the subculture before we ever had an ABH subculture. A lot of people have no longer know this, but the Venus 2 from Lime Crime had those like murky, grungy shades in that everybody raved about for the subculture. Lime Crime was doing it like two years before that palette ever came out. Oh, and we have ColourPop. Uh, Juvia's Place, BH Cosmetics, Zodiac. So these are your bigger things, I think. So yeah, those are those are some nice palettes. I think that's a, a good array of like neutrals and colorful things. We have affordable things. We have a little bit of everything here. I just think that because there, none of the original color stories are here, and if you could still get the color story, because I also know that some of the color stories that these dupe palettes were based on have been discontinued since then, but if you could, and if you would be willing, try the actual brand and then test out the formula and see the difference. Because they sent me three of their palettes and I had the original palette for all three of those already anyways. And I was able to do comparative swatches and I was like, no, this is, this is not the same quality as the original ABH Huda Beauty and Natasha Denona that these are based on. It just wasn't. Okay, so here I get a lot of images that don't necessarily belong together because some people also like took images of every single palette they had individually, which is okay, but I cannot keep track of who it belongs to. So if I say something and it wasn't yours, then I do apologize. Here we have, I think this is a Natasha Denona palette. Is this the bronze? I think it may be the bronze. I thought this looked really stunning for people with warm undertones, but to me, this is A21 note and I do want a little bit more depth in my palettes. Then we have the ABH Soft Glam. We all know I love mine. I think it's great, um, especially those like pinky tones that it has, I'm in love with. This is also ABH. I think this is, isn't this the Cosmic? I just have the Nouveau and I felt the other ones that came after it all looked too much like the Nouveau. So I skipped out on all the, all the other ones. Uh, here we do have someone who like sent an overview of their collection as well. Um, I think this is sitting in a drawer really satisfying huh to have them all like that that's why i love that as well i see cosmic brushes in here blend bunny some beauty bay i see the wilderness in there odin's eye can i recognize any of the other brands we have sigma and then we have some melt and pat mcgrath and ensley rain here at the front lovely i think you do mainly seem to be focusing on indie brands but I like seeing Melt and um, Pet McGrath in here as well. I know Melt is officially still an indie brand, I think, but they are available through Sephora in the US. So in my brain, they're more like a Sephora brand than an indie brand by now. But there's a lot of indie stuff in here, which I like. Beauty Bay, like I mentioned, I'm still testing out whether to see whether I can find anything that I like by them because they just don't make my favorite formula. And then here's the same drawer from the other side, so you can have a bit of a different view here. I think, is this, what brand is this? The B makes me think this is Lethal Cosmetics. Um, it, I think this is Lethal Cosmetics, but I'm not entirely sure. This is definitely Lethal Cosmetics. This is like the purple palette they did. Looks really stunning, but I already have so many purple palettes, so I went with the Melt Cosmetics Smoke Sessions too instead um and that was sent to me even because that that was something that i would want to get but yeah i have plenty of purples but this if you don't have it too many purples then i do think this lethal palette is a good pick and here's the overview of how this person stores it so this is the person with a lot of like single palettes so we also see some uh dragon on uh, the dragon eye from what's up in here some abh 
I think Blend Bunny Blends is in there. Maybe some Juvia's I See My Dream. Um, the one with the chevron print, isn't that a Tarte palette? I think it is. Viseart Dior Highlighter palette. Looks like you have some stunning things in there. Here we do get someone else again. Let me see. They send me one image, I think. So here, I think... Oh, what brands are these again? I know the very colorful rainbow thing is ColourPop, the Hue palette or something. I think there may be some Nomad in here. I'm not sure. No, that's the uh, the Hocus Pocus palette from ColourPop. That's the one you have. And then the Troublemaker. I'm not sure what these square pans are in the middle. They look familiar to me, but because I don't own them myself, I'm not entirely sure. And there is a Beauty Bay palette in here, the Midnight, it seems, with the blues and the purples. Very colorful. You do have some neutrals here as well. Um, and I, I think this, this has a really nice array with just six palettes. I think you can cover a lot of ground because if you mix and match these the right way, I think you can do a lot of different looks. I think that you guys are really showing me that really you don't need 300 eyeshadow palettes like I have. Here we have a collection again with all of the palettes opened. I see some Viseart. I see the Violette Etendue in here. I think the Cashmere as well. Um, the It's Freaking Bats. BH Cosmetics with the Blueberry Muffin. I think that's the Tiny Marvels palette again. It's the Sydney Grace palette, I'm pretty sure. Um, Natasha Denona. I'm not sure what that rectangular looking thing exactly is. I haven't seen that before, I think. Some Pat McGrath. And I'm not sure what the pink, pinky purple palette is in the middle. Loving that. I'm missing a really good cool tone palette though. If I had to give you one piece of advice, if you're looking, if you want to expand an actual true cool tone palette, you have cool tones in palettes, but you don't have a palette that does just that, but you do have warm tones, grungy things, blue things, purple things, mauvey things, green things, but nothing that's like a true, true cool tone. Maybe in the, like the Sydney Grace palette a little bit, but that's only like three shades. So maybe, maybe invest in a good cool tone. So here we, <clears throat> here we have two images, Laura Geller, let me see, we have some Elf, Profusion, um, some Morphe, I think, Colored Rain, ooh, that's a brand I haven't heard of in a while. Does anybody know if they're still around? Like, co Colored Rain was all the rage for a while, and then Crickets, what happened there? We have some Rude Cosmetics. I just tested them out for the first time this year. Thought it was okay, but not great quality. Then we have Too Faced, Milani. Oh, I used to have one of those Milani palettes, but I have the warm toned one, which is why I ended up decluttering it. But this, yeah, I should have gone for that cool toned version that they used to do. But at that time, when, that, when these palettes dropped, I didn't know yet how much I loved a cool tone. So I was just buying what everybody else was buying and I didn't really think for myself all that much. So yeah, this is nice. It is mainly like slightly more affordable things though. So maybe if you'd want to, say for the Too Faced one, like test out something that's more of like a Sephora brand if you want to. Uh, and here, I think this is all of the, our color pop here. This is from the same person. So, so elemental. Let me know, is that any good? Because I'm not sure if, like, that's one palette where I'm like, hmm, if I have to order from ColourPop for Black Friday, and I have to because my I'm running out of my setting spray, I want to make sure I hit free shipping. But if I just buy two setting sprays, it's not going to cut it with the discount I'll have. So I think I do want to try, like, one or two palettes. So I'm looking for rec recommendations of, like, things that ColourPop is currently selling what would you what what would you want me to test out because i'm sort of like stumped because i can't find anything on that website because i haven't really stayed on top of what they're doing and therefore i just feel a little lost on the website because there's so much on it so if you've been trying recent color pop stuff and you know a little bit what's on that website just let me know what you would want to see me test out because i do want to place an order with them for black friday ah here we here again we have someone who's done like some palette closed and then the next two images are the palettes opened. We have some the bomb. We have Huda Beauty, Re makeup revolution. We have Linda Hulberg. Oh, those palettes. 
I wish I got my hands on those. I do wish I'd got my hands on those. Also those quads she did with the effects. Now that I know how much I like her eyeshadow, I just wish I got on board with the brand sooner. Oh well. We have some MAC, Profusion, Sigma, Wet n Wild, Smashbox, Urban Decay, Lorac, Too Faced. I'm not sure what that New Delicious palette is. I think the white palette is the Kat Von D 10th Anniversary palette, if I'm not mistaken. See some Viseart in there. Elf. Yeah, there's a good array here, but let's look at these things opened. Yeah, see, it's the KVD 10th Anniversary palette. Um, very neutral heavy so far. Not a lot of color. Not a lot of color. Yeah, you're just loving your neutrals, which is fine, which is fine. But I would, if you want my advice and you want to branch out, maybe try a colorful palette and find the color you like. You seem to like some greens um, and maybe like some pastel -y, like the pastels that are in the LH and maybe you can like expand on that idea. Here again, someone who's showing me their bookcase where they keep their palettes. I, lo I love it when palettes are laid out like this. It makes it very hard for me to comment on what's actually in the collection because I can't see anything from the side, but very, very satisfying to see them organized like this. Oh, and here is some more organization. I think that some of these are in letter holders. I now recognize the flora palette here at the front from Odin's Eye. And I think that sort of jungle themed one is a ColourPop palette, which I almost bought but didn't. The Lush Life, I think it was called. So here we have some um, someone else who's using these little cubbies that they've attached to the wall to display some of their pretty palettes. There's Glamlight, Kaleidos, the Full Skull from the Melt Merte and Vida palettes. Love looking at that. And then the Odin's Eye. And then here this person also does this shelf system where everything else lives. I think that's a great idea. I think this is inside of a closet. That's a great way to store your palettes. I definitely think this is very, very cleverly done. I just can't really see what's inside. Here, another person who has shown me like just the way they organize their palettes and this works for me as well. I just think because you seem to have like double layers of palettes, do you reach for the ones that are in the back? That would be my question because for me, the way my brain works, if I don't see something, I forget it. I just forget it exists. So I need to have everything like visually there because else I just know I won't get to the things in the back. And I think from what I can tell, all of these cubbies are filled with palettes. Those aren't books, they're palettes, which means you have a very sizable collection like me, which I like to see because it means that I'm not the only person who's crazy. So here again, I think this is one of the best pictures that anyone sent me this time around. I just love it when people just do this, like the entire overlay and then the next per picture is going to be all of them open. Yes, love seeing that. I see Martina Cosmetics. I see some Jolie Beauty. I see the Arcana from Shroud. BA, no, Be Perfect. Beauty Bay. And I also see a lot of brands that I don't normally buy. The Moon Dust from Urban Decay. I didn't know that anyone would still have that in their collection. Some ColourPop, Juvia's Place. The Fawn from Misha Lu. Loving that, loving that. Some NYX. Cosmic brushes. Ooh, that um, Orpheus uh, palette. Um, I, what was the brand again? They were around for like a hot minute and I haven't heard from them since. Um, because I think they sent that first palette to people in PR and people were talking about it. And then when they no longer send PR, people stop talking about it, which is a bit sad. But I had that palette and didn't love it. I like the color story, but I didn't love the quality of the shimmers enough. Some Odin's Eye, more BH. What's that Green Witch palette? That looks interesting. Ah, I can see some V Cosmetics in here as well. Ah, yeah. You do like your grungy, spooky themed things with like the vampire stuff. Melt, yep. So here are all of those color stories laid out and I think you have a really nice array here. I can see neutrals in here. I can see true cool tones in here. I can see colorful things. I can see the grunge. This is a collection after my heart, chef's kiss. So the next person also did swatches. I love how some of you just went above and beyond to give me content to film with. 
I just love how, com how how devoted some of you are to sending me these images. So here we have, I think these are depotted naked palettes. Yeah, I think so, because I recognize the naked two and the naked three in these shades. Um, and then here we have some swatches of these quads. Can't really tell what they are. They also seem to be singles, which is fine. Uh, here we have a slightly more colorful palette that looks like it's ColourPop. I might, I might correct. Ooh, you have Marc Jacobs. I used to have one of these palettes myself, liked it, but didn't love it enough. I ended up decluttering it. Then I kept it around in my makeup memory box because I actually bought it on a trip years ago. And then I decided to get rid of it. I was like, I still have the memories attached to this. And Mar Marc Jacobs as a brand hasn't been around, but those palettes quality wise were some of the best. So when this brand comes back next year, I think they're slated to come back next year. Um, I'm very curious what they will do with their eyeshadows. Oh, and you have some more things here. Um, lots of colorful things too. So we have like those neutrals in the little like pans and then we have lots of colorful things. So a good blend. Again, neutrals with colors. I love seeing that. I love people, I love people who branch out. Oh, and then we also have those Juvia's Place palettes that weren't in the previous image yet. Alrighty. Oh, and you have some green tones as well. You've really nicely categorized it. Your colorful things, your green things together, your neutral things together. Love how you presented these images. Next up, we have, I think, a lot of depotted things. I see some Lethal in here, Cleona. Uh, I think there may be some Viseart shades in here. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. And we have the Natasha Denona Biba palette. I think you just love your singles and you love mixing and matching these and like making your own color stories. Love that. I love doing that, creating color stories and then creating looks, but sadly it doesn't make for really good content. So if you have any ideas how I can like put like, like content with my singles collection in this channel again, then I would love to know because I love my singles and I love playing with them, but I don't do it enough if I'm not going to be making content with it because then it's just not going to be top of mind for me. So I love seeing this. I need to be better at using my singles. That's the conclusion. So this is upside down for me. So if I look a little weird, that's why. But we have some Ensley Rain. We have Huda Beauty, Colourpop, Natasha Denona. Uh, I also see an, an older... Is that the Metropolis from Natasha Denona? Nice, nice. Lots of Odin's Eye. Am I just missing out? Because I see so many people's images have so many Odin's Eye palettes in. Am I the only person who doesn't like them? <laughs> maybe I am. Maybe, maybe it was just a fluke for me. Who knows? We have ABH in here. Nomad. Oh, that... Oh, the... Um, like, I, can I read this upside down? The Royal Europe with those multi-chromes in. That was on my wish list for like a hot minute and then I took it off because I was like, no, I have too many things already. Maybe, maybe someday if they keep it around. And then some more ColourPop and Sigma. You have the Barbie palette. Liking that, liking that. Yeah. So nice collection. Maybe, maybe try some drugstore things. Maybe if you can get your hands on it. Not every country has access to drugstore and other countries don't have access to high-end things, so depends on where you live, whether it's easy to get. I'm fully aware, but could be could be a suggestion. We have, I think this is a really, oh, yeah, we have several images here again. Um, so we have some Natasha Denona, Elf. I think this is another like bad habit kind of thing. The um, alter ego, that's what they're called right now. Thank you so very much for reminding me. They send me the goddess palette. Was it my favorite? Just saying. Uh, let's get nude and new neutrals from Gloss Gods. We all know I love Gloss Gods as a brand. Uh, Color of Rain by Gloss Gods. Love seeing that you love Gloss Gods as much as I do. Uh, nude Prism from Lunar Beauty. Some more Natasha Denona Lethal Cosmetics. I think that's that same purple palette we've seen before. Then we have the Sakura palette from Alter Ego, that's one that I almost bought myself, but then I tested out the things they sent me in PR and I was like, mm. um, MUA, ColourPop, we see some Moira in here. The mini version of the Sigma New Mod, Blanc Fusion from Zoeva. Mm. Such a good palette, such a good palette. And then from the same person, we have some ColourPop Super Shocks 
elf, uh, the five in a box from um, Catrice. Does rituals do makeup? Yeah, I didn't know, I didn't know. Um, and then the Revolution Soap palette here as well. Lovely collection. Mm, is it colorful enough? Yeah, there are some colorful things here as well. So I think this is okay. That's a, that's a really solid collection. Here we have uh, some Makeup Revolution mainly, I think, and some Essence, NYX, um, some drugstore brands mainly, which is fine, great. Here someone has, again, oh, this is so satisfying to see. Like I said, I love it when things are displayed like this, but it is a little bit difficult to see, but we have a lot of BH Cosmetics. I see cosmic brushes in there, a whole host of singles at the bottom. Like I said, I need to be better at using my singles. So let this be a reminder, Micah, use your singles. And then I think... I'm not sure those 12 pans look interesting at the top. The neutrally one and the purpley one. What are they? Let me know in a comment down below because I can't tell. I can see you have some gloss gods there as well. Whoop whoop. Tiny Marvels. Uh, Sydney Grace. Catrice, Fallen Colors. I can recognize some Huda Beauty in here. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, Glam Shop is in here as well. Um, so you really, really have a wide variety, and I think as well because all of your singles are laid out and, like, col uh, like organized by color, I think it makes it very, very satisfying to look at. I love looking at pictures like this. So here again, someone who sent it closed and open, really nicely laid out. Love this. We have NYX. We have... Ooh, are those the K-Beauty things? I can't read it, but I think they look like the Lily by Red palettes. We have Makeup Revolution quite a bit in here. Catrice, more Catrice, I think. Yeah, this is all Makeup Revolution. And then, I think, is this also Makeup Revolution? There's like Zodiac looking palettes at the bottom. I'm not sure what those are supposed to be, but a lot of Catrice, a lot of NYX, a lot of Makeup Revolution. So those are solid brands. NYX has never really made my favorite eyeshadow formula. I did have a lot of their singles, though, at some point. I used to have a full palette of deep potted NYX singles, and I love them. The shade Root Beer was my favorite. They used to do really nice things, but that was, like, when I very, very first started out with makeup, those were some of the only eyeshadows I had. So they got really old really quickly, so I had to throw them out at some point, but... NYX eyeshadow quality just hasn't been the same compared to like 2009, 2010 when I first started wearing makeup. Um, here again, I would think maybe, maybe if you want to, something high end, just to tickle yourself a little bit, but I understand if that's not in your budget because you do have a really nice array of very affordable brands here. So here we have an image again of them open. I know this is also someone who sent it to me closed, but it's somewhere at the end. So we'll just look at the open ones here. I see, I think some Natasha Denona and Catrice, Huda Beauty Rose Quartz. Um, we have the Tribe, BH Cosmetics Love in London. Love seeing it. I know it was discontinued, but it's still one of my favorites. I see some ColourPop here. Um, the Essence palette I was mentioning, so some other people have them still, uh, the ones with the weird looking pans, I had that exact palette, but I had so many rosy tones that I ended up decluttering it. So yeah, here I think y you like a rosy tone, that that's what, what my conclusion is here, and then you like, and then you like greens, and some neutrals with blues. There is variety here, there definitely is. Um, what I would be missing is a true, true, actual, like, smack in the middle neutral palette that can see you through night and day. It's either very smoky what you have, or very daytime, or very colorful. There's, like, no in-between, in my opinion, but that, that could just be me. So here we have some palettes. I, I can, oh yeah, the Coastal palette from Alter Ego, that's one they sent me as well. That's a dupe for the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz, if I'm not mistaken. The Good Day Sydney from Essence. And then I just see some Huda Beauty, the five in a box from Catrice, and some little mini palettes where you've put some like deep potted things in, I think. 
we all know I love getting the use out of my eyeshadow. And if deep potting helps you to actually use your shadows, please do. It was a game changer for me once I started rearranging things and creating my own palettes. It just works so much better to have all the shades you like in one place. It just works. Here we have someone's collection. We, they've also sent me all of their singles, which is great. So there are like, I think there are some Art Deco in here, like those little pans that you can click in some of their empty palettes. There are some liquids here as well, uh, some shiny things. And then here are the palettes. Now I don't remember which palette it was, but I do remember talking about it in a new makeup releases, the palette in the middle with like all the spooky images. Um, I remember that release and I think there are some like color pop things in. I'm not, not entirely sure what those big colorful palettes are with the pressed glitters in. They look like color pop palettes to me, but I think it's actually another brand. I can see some Blend Bunny in here. Um, I think there are some Bella Beauty bar. Uh, that really long palette, is that that Chinese brand? Cheer Yep or something like that? I, that's a that's a brand I'm like eyeing up because they do some interesting things. Um, I have found some C like Chinese beauty brands on YesStyle and they're killing it with the grunge. So the next time I order from YesStyle, I'm definitely going to try some of that. So because that looks like like it might be that. We have some gourmand girls in here. Nomad, Fire and Ice, Huda Beauty, I think. There are some nice things. I think that's the balm as well. And then here, the rest of this collection are some really Jimongous palettes. I can see some Suva Beauty in here. I think um, some K-Beauty stuff, the Unleasha Glitterpedias. Uh, let me see. The big one is the Be Perfect Stacey Marie palette and this ginormous one. I don't know what that is, but that could be like Profusion or something like that. Like some, there are multiple brands who do these really big ones. So I'm not a huge fan of these really, really ginormous palettes. I just don't get the use out of them. But you have you have a nice array here. You have some warmer tone neutrals, some colorful things, um, and you love your large palettes. Here we have a st some stacks of palettes, but they are also going to be opened in some of the other palettes. We have the new neutrals, some NYX, I think some Natasha Denona, Kaleidos, Pat McGrath. I can see some Natasha, more Natasha Denona in there, some Profusion. So here's the first batch. That's the Kaleidos palette. Oh, we have more than one Kaleidos palette. Okay, great, great. Love seeing that. Um, and then here are the other ones, I think. We have some BH. I think that's the Los Angeles palette I see there. Natasha Denona, uh, Pat McGrath. Which one is that with those jewel tones? What release was that? Because I don't remember Pat McGrath doing a palette like that. Uh, not seeing a lot of neutrals, though. Just the Natasha Denona Glam, which if that's the only neutral palette you need, that's fine, of course. Oh, here, here we get the neutrals. You have the Tati palette. Ah, I don't remember what it was called, but that Tati palette so many people loved. I just wasn't going to buy this for how expensive it was and the shipping and handling fees wasn't going to work. You have a P. Louise palette, which are those any good? I don't know because they're so big. I'm just, I'm not buying them. And then the subliminal is one you have. So is the other one then a Pat McGrath palette? And those were all of the palettes I had to talk to you about. That's the end of it. Um, so let me put my my uh, laptop off to the side. So thank you so very much for joining this video today. Thanks again for everyone who participated in this video. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video today and that my comments weren't too harsh because I don't wanna like be very negative. These are people with regular day lives. They're not content creators. So I just love that you guys wanted to participate and that I was able to do this video again. So thank you so, so very much to everyone who entered. Thank you for watching this video today. And then I will be back very, very soon with a new video because I post four times a week on this channel. See you then. Bye-bye.